cleans my guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you Well, I want to talk to you about uh, repentance and spiritual warfare, uh, which is especially needed in these days. Um, I looked at a, a Bible code video, and I saw that Trump seems to win the presidency, but the code also says in the matrix, quote, saints win, unquote. And then a little further down, it has, um, quote, three years, unquote. And then it has a half year, unquote. So three and a half years. This all made me think of Pharaoh and Moses um, commanding in the name of the Lord Pharaoh to get God's People, to set God's people free, it made me think of making spiritual warfare against the principalities and powers and rulers of this darkness, working through them to keep God's people in bondage. And then I got this word question from Eve on uh, the 7th. I asked Father for a word about what was on his heart to speak to me today and received Jeremiah 11 and 9. And I quote uh, 9 through 14, Jeremiah 11 and 9, And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, who refused to hear my words. Of course, this was Zedekiah, apostate Jerusalem, and his gang. That's the apostate leadership of Christianity out there. That's what this text represents. That's what the Lord showed us. And, and they are gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. And, of course, um, uh, Judah is spirit-filled Christianity that's running after other gods and so on and so forth. You know, and that's true. I mean, they're caught up in all kinds of stuff like the, the um, false revival movement, the faction movement, uh, all other kinds of movements out there. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And they shall cry it unto me, but I will not hearken unto them. They have to repent, right? Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto which they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. So Baal won't help. Their false Jesus won't help them. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have you set up altars to the shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me because of their trouble. And then Eve asks a question about this. Uh, do you think he doesn't want us to pray against what he is proposing for his people who are in idolatry? I'm wondering how to apply this text during this time of fasting and warfare in light of the Bible codes. She's talking about the ones we're talking about right now. Well, I answered, I said, um, I think that we have to pray for them for repentance and revival. God is able to grant this so that they will be entitled to life. 1 John 5 and 16 says, If any man sees his brother sinning a sin not unto death, which means it's under the blood, right? It might be ignorance, it might be failure or whatever, you know. He shall ask of God, and he will give him life, life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, and I believe this is willful disobedience, Hebrews 10, 26, and 27. He says, not concerning this do I say that he should make request. In other words, don't ask for life for somebody that's in willful disobedience. Ask that they repent. Ask God to grant them the fear of God and repentance, right? Because him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And those who do not forgive are not forgiven. 
If you're not forgiven, what are you going to get from God? Nothing. Okay. Verse 17. All righteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Yes, that's the ignorance, failure, so on and so forth. A person wants to do good, but is failing. Uh, the factious and those like them who believe in Baal, which is another Jesus, are dead to God. He says, not unto death. This is a sin unto death that they do, because they're dead to God. They have no conscience of Scripture. And, of course, I'm hoping that they will find mercy and forgiveness so their, their time is up. In other words, God, like Nebuchadnezzar, brought him through a time and brought him out of it. So let's pray for that, okay? And uh, Luke 23 and 34 says, And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was very good. He had to do that. Jesus had to do that. But according to his own parable, his father sent his armies and destroyed them. Matthew 22, 1 on. And Jesus answered and spake again a parable unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who made a marriage feast for his son, sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the marriage feast, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them that are bidden, Behold, I have made my, my uh, made ready my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it, went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his merchandise, uh, and the rest laid hold on his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them. But the king was wroth. He sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Okay, so you see there is precedent for what I'm saying here. We need to pray that God grant them repentance and the fear of the Lord. Uh, you can't say God give them life because they're not repented. Then we got this revelation. It's so interesting how we keep getting these revelations for right on time with other things that all come together to, to make a wonderful teaching or revelation. And this was Sandy Shaw on the 4th of this month. We called it, What Are You Doing? <laughs> in this dream, I'm in a huge old mansion. It must have been three or four stories high. And I believe, from looking at the whole context here, that this represents Christianity as it once was. Like First John, and of course there are people that are living that way. You know, First John 2.24 as for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If that which you heard from the beginning abide in you, you also shall abide in the Son and in the Father. And First John 2, 6 says, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So that's that old time religion, right? Can't change it. Can't add to it. Can't take away from it. That's what he said. So we got to go back to it. I was standing on the balcony of the second floor. So it's three or four tall, and she's on the second floor. I'm, I'm thinking this is a graduation thing, you know. Looking down on the right side, there was a huge magnolia tree that was budding. Well, magnolias bloom in spring, but they also can bud in the fall. We receive many revelations that spring will come in fall. Passover is a is in spring, but it's spiritually may come in fall this time. Passover. You know, the Passover of Planet X, the destroyer, and a lot of other stuff. And a sign given us last year was that many trees bloomed in the fall. We had never, ever seen anything like that. Never. It was extremely unusual. Like I said, we got a cherry blossom and, and said, Okay, Lord, we want another confirmation. Put a cherry in that blossom. And he did. <laughs> Praise the Lord, he did. Uh, astounding. There was a, a family sitting on a blanket having a picnic. There was also different people riding on bicycles and laughing and having fun. And there were some people on their cell phones. I can see some people in a in a field playing baseball. These people were not doing anything wrong, but were not listening to God, and God was not number one in their lives. And you know, saints, it's a time 
to sacrifice ourselves in prayer and interceding for those who don't know the judgments coming upon us? Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Therefore let us also, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, lay aside every weight. See, there are things that aren't sin, but they are weights to keep us back, right? Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And of course, if God tells you not to do it, to go and do this instead, then it is sin. It's something that normally wouldn't be sin, but it is sin then. Philippians 2 and 4, Not looking each one of you to his own things, but each of you also to the things of others. Think about all the people who are in the way of these judgments. They need your prayers. Colossians 3 and 1, If then you were raised together with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are upon the earth. For you died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Confess that. That's a good confession. Then in a distance I saw a huge wave coming. If you remember, she had one recently about this too, a huge wave coming. This is, of course, a different parable, but it wasn't as if I saw a beach. I just saw water. Well, that could be significant. It could be that it's not a physical wave, you know. This wave could represent the enemy about to come against God's people, like ISIS, martial law, the government. Uh, Jude 1 and 13, wild waves of the sea foaming out their own shame, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness has been reserved forever. So waves can be used quite differently than literal waves, right? In Isaiah 57 and 20, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, for it cannot rest. Its waters cast up mire and dirt. Or the wave could represent natural judgments like earthquakes, tsunamis, Weather warfare, which I'm convinced they're doing. If you do a little study on the on the uh, internet, you'll see that there's pretty good absolute proof, I think, <laughs> of that. And it seems that they're driving people away from the coast. At any rate, uh, or it could be all of the above, right? The wave I'm talking about. From the balcony, I started yelling to get their attention. Come on, you have to come up. The water is coming, and water can represent the curse of the word, which comes to those who are disobedient, like Deuteronomy 28 teaches. Uh, if you don't come, come up, you will stay in danger. Well, that sounds like you can get out of all of the danger if you come up, <laughs> doesn't it? Doesn't it sound like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, please hear me, she said. So those who hear and do, do not do, uh, delude themselves, as James said, right? And they are responsible. Coming up means going to a safe place in God. Innocence and faith is important for this. You can't, can't have a conscience that's defiled if you're going to have faith, right? And Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. book of Revelation tells you those in heavenly places the beast couldn't touch. Those on the earth, they could. So get up there in them heavenly places and start praying for the people that are down there on the dirt. <laughs> on the mud ball, right? Spiritually speaking. The people looked up at me, but no one came up. Okay, so we meet, we need to pray for them. This is a warning right here. We need to pray for them. We need to exercise our faith and pray, call out for them. Look, don't get caught up in the affairs of this life right now. Uh, you need to do this. The bride does this. Read the book of Esther. She went out for the people of God. She spent her time trying to save them. She said, then Missy came up and said, look, and I said, look. And she looked down uh, from the balcony, too, and I said, they won't come up. Then I pointed to show Missy the wave that was coming. They won't come up, and they are in danger. And Missy looked at me and said, maybe they're supposed to drown. 
Well, that's true about some. Absolutely. Um, then Sandy said, I said, couldn't we at least pray for them first? I had no longer finished saying that, and the water was there. Uh, well, prayer and faith is, is how we can help most so that God uh, save whom he will, right? And if we don't do it now, trying to do it at the last minute won't work. Notice, it won't work. The wave was there. Waited too long. Please don't do that. I saw a newborn and, or newborn and six-month-old babies on top of the wave. I believe babies represent the weak, innocent, and humble of God's people. I said, come on, Missy, let's grab the babies. And between the two of us, we grabbed them all in two armfuls. And, of course, this is what we can do by faith in prayer. We can save people by doing that. Because God said, we'll answer our prayers. He gave us authority against the principalities and powers. And he said he would hear our prayers. So let's pray. If you're a believer, you certainly know that God answers prayer. The wave came up to the top of the railing, but it came no further. We only felt a mist from the water. And then I woke up. So if you're up there, you're safe. Well, this dream made me ask a question. Was I too busy doing my own thing and not hearing from the Lord? A good idea does not necessarily mean it is God's plan. Uh, agreed, people are just all the time doing good ideas, but it has nothing to do with what the Lord wants you to do right now. Mm -hmm. And this is a good question for everybody right now to ask themselves, you know. Because many are in danger. And she gives the verse Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Oh, yes. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. Because if you don't, you might miss out. If you don't pray for these people, you might miss out. I'm going to share this parable with you that tells, says exactly that. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your, my, uh, your ways my ways, says the Lord. Saving the babies. Notice the, the others didn't pay any attention. The grown-ups. But saving the babies represents the weak, the innocent, the ignorant, and the humble of God's people, I believe. And when we know what is coming, why would we not act as Mordecai and Esther did? Because they knew what was coming. Esther 3 and 8. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are different from those of every people. Well, that's true. Our, our laws are. Neither keep they the king's laws, and that's true quite a bit too. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let, me, let it be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who have the charge of the king's business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from off his hand, gave it unto Haman, that's his sign of authority, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the, the people also, to do with them as seemeth good to thee. What God is saying is, Okay, beast, sick them. They're bad, they're disobedient, sick them. You think he didn't do that? There's no place in the Bible that any beast ever attacked God's people and it wasn't God that sent it. It's clear. Verse 12. Then were the king's scribes called in in the first month, in the thirteenth day thereof. And there was written according to all that Haman commanded unto the king's satraps and to the governors um, that were in every province, and to the princes of every people, to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written, and it was sealed with the king's ring. 
In other words, he had authority to do that. And letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Now, I'm sure there's people out there saying, oh, they ain't planning to do that. You don't know. They are planning to do that. The Lord has spoken to us in dreams and visions about it, and the proof has been found. ISIS was created for that purpose, and they've been brought into the country for that purpose. In so many different ways, they've been brought into the country across the border illegally. They make the border guards stand down. You won't, they won't let them stop them. They're just flooding in over the border, come in on UPS planes from overseas. They come across the border in white, whited out uh, Homeland Security buses. They bring them in any way they can get them in here. Yes, they're getting ready. And there are a lot of young men of military age. And as you remember, they were running around the country getting uh, bomb-making materials the last time, and then they quit advertising that anymore. Getting propane canisters and cell phones and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Verse 14, a copy of the writing that the decree should be given out in every province was published unto all the peoples, that they should be ready against that day. The post went forth in haste by the king, king's commandment, and the decree was given out in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And on down 4 and 1. Now when Mordecai knew all, all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes, and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out in the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Amen. So, why should we be any different when we were in the same situation here, you know? And he came even before the king's gate, for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whither the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing. Well, there it is. Somebody's got to do it. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And Esther's maidens and her chamberlains came and told it her. Uh, and the queen was exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take his sackcloth off of him, but he received it not. And then called Esther for Hathach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her and charged him to go to Mordecai to know what this was and why it was. So Hathach went forth to Mordecai unto the broad place of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to char uh, charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. So, uh, so let me say, go in unto the king, and make request for his people. Is that not right? what the, we're being told here very plainly? And Hathach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And Esther spake unto Hathach and gave him a message unto Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whenever man or woman, shall come in unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law for him, and that, the, and that is that he be put to death, except those to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai bade them return, answer to Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then will relief and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house will perish. Mm. Oh, my goodness. So you see, we do need to do this. It does not please God. 
And who knoweth whether thou art not come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Well, absolutely. That's what we've come here for. Then Esther bade them return answer unto Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast in like manner, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. And of course, we've... You know, we received words about, several words about fasting and praying, and we're all doing it. We're fasting, we're praying, we're seeking the Lord, we're asking, you know, what can we pray about? We're getting answers, we're, we're going to the Lord. Now, that's why I'm sending this to you, right? Matthew 18:14 says, Even so, it's not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. There's them babies. <laughs> Get to praying. <laughs> Some babies, you know. Proverbs twenty four eleven. Deliver them that are carried away unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, see that thou hold back. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew not this, doth not he that weigheth the hearts consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his work? See, but you know it. I'm telling you, you know it. It's very plain what the Lord is commanding us to do now. Fast and pray and seek God. And ask for mercy and grace. Jeremiah 21 and 12. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute justice in the morning. And deliver him that is robbed out of the hand of the oppressor. Lest my wrath go forth like fire. And burn so that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Well, so he's saying, look, you're not going to escape if you don't pray for these people. Right? Pray for those in the Middle East, those saints that are suffering over there and dying over there. Proverbs 24, 11. Deliver them that are carried away unto death. And those that are ready to be slain, see thou hold back. Amen. Do it, saints, do it. Matthew 18 and 1 says, In that hour came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called unto him a little child, and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except you turn and become as little children, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child... The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So you need to be great. You need to be a child. You'll escape. You'll be on the top of the wave instead of under the wave, right? You'll escape. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall cause one of these little ones that believe on me to stumble, it's profitable for him that a great millstone should be hanged about his neck and that he should be sunk in the depths of the sea. Amen. Isaiah 58 and 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? And when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? That's denying your flesh right there, isn't it? That's a form of it. And, of course, we're going to be called on. There's going to be a lot of homeless folks in the days to come. We're going to be called on to do what we can for everybody. Isaiah 49 and 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, these may forget, but I will not forget thee. He will not forget those who forget them either. That's the, that's the bad thing. That's the bad side of that coin. Psalm 82 and 1, which is a psalm of Asaph. God standeth in the congregation of God. He judgeth among the gods. How long... He's talking about the junior gods there. <laughs> How long will you judge unjustly and respect the persons of the wicked? 
Judge the poor and the fatherless. Here we get into the weak and the helpless and so on and so forth. Do justice to the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the poor and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither do they understand. They walk to and fro in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Hey, that's coming too. And I said, and I said, ye are gods, and all of you sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all the nations. If God has a son, is it God? Well, of course, the spiritual man is God. God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Not the son of man, it's the son of God. Amen. And your son of God in you has authority given by the Lord. So go and exercise it. Deuteronomy 21 and 9. So shalt thou put away the innocent blood from the midst of thee when thou shalt do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord. Proverbs 31 and 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are left desolate. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and minister justice to the poor and needy. Proverbs 14 and 31. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that hath mercy on the needy honoreth him. Isaiah 1 and 17. Learn to do well, seek justice, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Deuteronomy 14 and 29. And the Levite, because he hath no portion or inheritance with thee, and the sojourner, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand which thou doest. Ooh. Acts 20 and 35. In all things I gave you an example, that so laboring you ought to help the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It's more blessed to give than to receive. And Deuteronomy 10 and 18. He doth execute justice for the fatherless and widow, and loveth the sojourner in giving him food and raiment. Psalm 10 and 8. He that sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places, Doth he murder the innocent? His eyes are privily set against the helpless. Rescue him. Rescue him from him. Don't let people go out and do such things, you know. They are doing it. And Romans 16 and 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Christ, but their own belly. And by their smooth and fair speech they beguile the hearts of the innocent. Save them. Save them from the wicked. Saints were called to do this. I know it gets us in trouble, <laughs> but it's a, it's a sacrifice of, to the Lord that's acceptable to the Lord. So uh, when we post this, you can uh, go there, and, and uh, we're going to call the name of it Repentance and Spiritual Warfare, I think. And so please you know, think on this. Uh, you can look at the codes if you like. The first one is... I, the nicest one, and maybe the second and last one was real good. All of them actually were talking about Donald Trump, you know, being president. And as I said, you can go on a line and find some that um, Hillary will be president. They didn't seem as, as solid to me. It, it, more like, you know, if you don't, I'm going to whip you. If you don't do right, I'm going to whip you. Okay. Anyway. I do think um, this has a lot of weight, especially the way it was given. So we'll see. Main thing is we do what God wants us to do, and that is, uh, you know, uh, defend. Uh, the people who can't defend themselves, they may not know 
that they're in a bad area. They may not know. You may, you know, you may say, oh, they're not going to listen to me. Well, you never know. You, you could be a piece and somebody else could be a piece and they could hear a news article and they could see the things that you're talking about, signs leading up to something. You know, just, just do it because it pleases the Lord, just because He wants you to, right? Don't, don't always cop out. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to help us to be bold and uh, in our faith and to seek you um, uh, in, and do spiritual warfare against the enemies of God's people like Moses commanded that Pharaoh to set God's people free. We can do the same thing, Lord. And we thank you for pointing that out to us, Lord. Um, in the name of Jesus, we just break the power of these demon forces, these principalities and powers and rulers of this darkness. We just bind them and we cast them down in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for having mercy upon your people and delivering them out of these uh, very hard things that are coming upon the world. We thank you, Father, for having mercy. Lord, we cry for mercy. Uh, we cry for grace, Lord. And for those who are stubborn and self-willed and, and their mind is uh, made up and they're just going to worship their false god and go their own way and do their own thing, well, Lord, uh, give them a good slap on the face. Uh, or like a few people I know of, send them to hell for a few minutes. Or, uh, you know, whatever you can do to, to uh, bring them to the fear of the Lord and um, the faith of the Lord. Lord, do something quick for these people. That's why we cry out to you, Lord. Help us all to cry out. Bring to everybody's remembrance the things that we've said this day and and uh, make them to remember the, the things that are needed and uh, needed to be prayed for and let them pray in faith, believing, just like this Bible code says. It says, the saints win. Oh, glory be to God. But... Um, it's not fatalism that we're talking about here. There is a process to get there. And this is it. And we're talking about it right now. This is how we get there. We thank you, Father, for your great mercy towards your people, Lord. We don't deserve it. None of your people in this country deserve it. But the shaking that's going to come naturally speaking, uh, I believe, will be enough to grant God's people repentance. And, Lord, we may not even need uh, martial law. Praise God, if, if that's so. Whatever is necessary to grant people the fear of God and repentance, Lord, we want that without the judgment that takes them totally out. We just ask for your mercy and your grace, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you for showing us. We've been asking you to show us exactly what to pray for. And, uh, Lord, you're doing it. We thank you so much for your, your mercy. And Father, um, Lord, help us to make time. Help us not to get distracted with things that have no eternal value. They don't even compare to the death of a soul or the death of someone who, who won't have time to grow up because they're taken out. Lord, uh, Lord, let us put first your kingdom and your righteousness so that all these other things will be added unto us, Lord. Let us learn to walk by faith. Yes, we can do this. We can uh, lay aside all the things that we want to do for a short period of time now, especially, and uh, seek you. Seek first your kingdom and, and seek you for the people's sake. You will hear our prayers, Lord. You want everything that you do. Uh, you, you do it through our prayers. And... Um, you said we have not because we ask not. So, Lord, we're going to ask. We're going to ask for your great mercy. We're going to ask that you do abundantly above all we can ask or think, Lord. And uh, we're going to ask you to do all these things to preserve your people. And I'm sure we're going to be satisfied. I know, I know that there will be a lot of grief because of the people who die and the people who are taken out and destroyed and all these things. But, Lord, also there's going to be a lot of joy among your people that you have answered prayer and you have delivered people out of the teeth of these sharks. And uh, we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, saints. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Keep me in your prayers. 
Good night. Can quench my thirsting soul. Purest water make me whole. Let your streams of mercy flow. Oh Jesus, I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word. For information and materials and to contribute, go to ubm1.org. Contributions only may be addressed to UBM PO Box 544, Madisonville, Tennessee 37354. The shining rays of red and white. Jesus, I trust in you. O sacred heart, in you I find mercy seated for all.